So if you're like me and you're using BSPWM without any of the default configs, you might not be sure what sort of hotkeys you should include within your simplex hotkey daemon config. So today I'm going to show you what I'm using and basically talk about some of the important stuff that I think you should include. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So I'm going to be showing you how to do stuff through BSPC but for stuff that there is an alternative through like XDO or XDO tool, I'll also show you that. Typically I will tend to prefer that method but maybe you want to have everything bound within BSPC. So let's actually show you what that looks like. So if I go over to the screen I have it on, so first thing I'll just disable my compositor. That's actually one of the really cool things I do think that you should probably have if you're making videos. It's not useful for most people, but for content creators, definitely it's something you should include. So in your .config folder within your SXHKD, did I forget a letter there? I don't even know. X SXHKD, no, I actually said it right. And then within the RC file. So this is what my config looks like. So the first one we've got in here is it's useful especially when you're trying to debug stuff and that is this prompt script. So this is something that I just pinched from Luke Smith. So if I just show you what that looks like, it's this very very simple script that basically will just open up a D menu prompt and then it'll print out this text and then after it finishes it'll run this command. So if we go over to that, so prompt, if you can hear outside, I hope you can't, but it's really windy out there so yeah hopefully it's not too bad. So yeah, this is just this basic D menu script that'll basically just open up this prompt. So if we press that now, we can see up the top, it'll ask me if I want to quit my X session, or it should probably say Xorg session, but anyway, doesn't matter. And then if I press yes, it'll actually run that command. If I press no or press escape, then it won't run it. So that's something you should probably have. If you don't want to have it to prompt you, then obviously you can just run BSPC quit, or you could kill BSPWM, that's also an option. Or there's various other ways. I don't know why I'm using BSPC quit. I probably could just use... Actually, it's probably best to use that in this case. Just in case BSPWM has to clean up anything. I don't know if it has to do any like memory management in the background. That you might need to worry about if you're just doing it like this. So maybe doing kill signal 9 is probably not the best idea. But the next one is something that you can't do without having to quit and reload unless you use BSPC. And that is to restart BSPWM. So this is useful, especially when you're testing BSPWM. You're not going to really use it any other time. And also the benefit of this is that because I'm launching my polybar within the BSP config, it also reloads my polybar, which isn't super useful because I've also got a hotkey dedicated to that. But it is nice to have there, especially when I'm testing them both at the same time. So the next one we have is to kill a window. So I've got that on Super Shift Q. That's just a very basic command. I'm using XDO to do this. So XDO is written by the developer of BSPWM and also the Simplex Hotkey Daemon. But there's also the option to use XDO tool. I'll leave in the description down below the XDO tool version of this. But I find XDO a bit easier just because it's, it's far less to write out. So XDO close, if we just run that in this window, basically all that'll do is just kill that window. But there is another way to do that and that is through this command right here. So BSPC node-c. That'll also kill the window. The reason I'm not using that is because if I want to go to say DWM, I would then have to rewrite that command to use something else. That's either DWM specific or to then move it to something generic like XDO. And this script afterwards is just in case I'm full screening and then I quit an application. So if we full screen this and then I quit this, you can see I don't have my polybar and also all the windows are hidden. Actually, you can't see that. Then now you can see it. But if we quit this now, now it will reshow the polybar and also reshow these windows. So that's just something nice to have there within this script right here. So I'll show you what that script looks like. I've also got all of these scripts available on my GitHub. So if there's anything you're unsure about, then go check that out. So pretty much all this does is it'll find all the windows that are hidden on the focus desktop and then it'll tell the polybar to show itself through the IPC pr protocol and then it will just basically loop through all the nodes and then show them. There's probably a simpler way to do that and I might try to find one but for now this is what I'm using. The next one is just to focus on a node in a certain direction so that's fairly simple. You would have seen this something like i3 so that's just super and then a vim key for the direction. So if you noticed the Vim cursor is flashing, that's 
changing the focus or like telling you which screen it's focused on basically and also the border around the windows change but you might not be able to see that as easily the next one is to just send a window to a different desktop so let's say we want to send this window here to desktop 2 so we send that over and i'm also running bsp unhide here so if i'm sending a full screen window to another desktop then i will also unhide my polybar which has some problems i haven't worked this out perfectly because if i have two polybars in that case one on my main screen and one on my external screen then it will show both the polybars so i need to work out how to find out which polybar is on my current desktop and then only unhide that if my desktop isn't on the same screen but it's a bit of a hassle most of the time it works fine though so next up we have send window to desktop and swap to that desktop so that's very similar to send window to desktop but the only difference is i'm using bspc desktop dash f to switch to that desktop as well then we have just the bsp full screen so this is a very simple script i'll bring that one up as well i know i'm not going through everything super in depth but you guys can see what's on the screen and all this stuff is available on my github so if you want to check it out and actually slowly go through it for yourself then that'll be available there so bsp full screen it actually just makes use of a couple of the scripts that i've already shown you so we've got bsp hide which i haven't shown you but it's basically just the opposite of bsp unhide so i might show it i might not it doesn't really matter but it will be available on the github it all you need to really know for now is that it does the opposite of what BSP unhide does. So basically what this will do is we'll check if the window that I'm focused on is in full screen. And if it is, then it will set it back to tiling mode. And if it isn't, it'll set it to full screen mode. And then also hide the nodes and also hide the polybar. So the reason I have to hide the nodes is because I use transparency. And if you don't hide the nodes, then basically what happens is that it doesn't actually hide what's behind your transparent window. So on i3, it would automatically hide stuff. With BSPWM, it doesn't, it just leaves everything there. So if you have windows behind the current window and the current window is transparent, then you can just see all the windows behind it. And I don't really like that, but maybe you do. For me, I think it kind of looks awful. So I've also got this command in here to switch between floating and tiling mode. I don't use this a ton, but if I really want a tiling window, then that's also an option for me. So I can drag this around, but that's has nothing to do with the simplex hotkey daemon config. That's more of a BSP thing. So the next thing we have is just uh, swapping a window with a direction. So this is similar to what you might have seen with i3 or other window managers. If I press super shift and then a vim key, so if we press h in this case, then that'll switch over to that screen. I don't know why I didn't bother opening up screen key for this video. I probably should have. I'll do that now, actually. Why did I open up another thing? I have a terminal right here. Screen key. There we go. So if I close that, there we go. So now I can switch those like that. And there we go. Perfect. So I'd also be able to switch up and down if I have nodes there. So if we LS that so you can see the difference. There you go. I can swap those up and down as well with super j and super or super shift j and super shift k okay so next up we have focus on a desktop so let's say i want to focus on desktop 2 i can click on that within my polybar but i'm never going to do that what i usually do is just press super and then one of the numbers so zero through nine. Zero is actually 10 so that'll be on my external screen but let's say we want to go to five for example you can see up on my little polybar that it now says i am focused on window five we can go back to one just with super one. There is a way to resize windows through XDO, but I haven't found it works as neatly. You can't resize outward and resize inward. So it doesn't really resize as cleanly as the BSPC version does. So that's why I'm still using this. So I've just got that bound to control alt and then H that'll expand outward and then control super and then L will expand inward. And then you can see for the other keys that it basically expands the way you'd expect it to so nothing too special there on a floating window it behaves differently to a actual tiling window because of the way that bsp handles its nodes so if i was to make this floating then we'd better actually modify this really easily so we can do all all that fancy stuff like that but we can't actually expand this node um outward to the right 
this node on the right here because of the way that nodes are actually handled. On i3, it would expand it to the right and actually just move it that way, like towards the left side of the screen, but you can't do that within BSP, at least with the BSPC bindings. So I've also got a command to move a floating window. So that's very simple. So if we just make this one floating again, then we go control alt and then the arrow keys. Oh, I've actually got a problem there. I need to fix that one. I must have a, uh, yeah, it is moving, but I've got a binding that is overlapping with it. So it does move. It just doesn't move as neatly as it should be right now. I'll fix that. Normally that would just move perfectly fine. I could just hold down the key and it would just move across the screen. So most of the other stuff in here is just general system stuff. So we have this one to actually reload my simplex hotkey daemon config. This one to reload my polybar. Both of those I think are very useful. Then this other stuff in here, I don't think there's anything that's BSP specific, but most of the other stuff in here is just generally good stuff to have bound within your window manager or within your hotkey daemon. So I've also got keys to reboot and shut down my system so I don't have to actually write out sudo reboot and sudo shutdown, but I've also got those within my prompt script. So if I was to press super shift and then R, that would give me a prompt to reboot. Obviously not going to do that right now, very bad idea to do during the middle of a video. And we've got one to bring up my lock screen. I don't think that'll actually kill my recording, so I, don't, I'm not going to show that. It's just my lock screen. And also, I actually will do a dedicated video on better lock screen at some point, though. So remind me to do that, or I'll probably forget about it. And then we also have one to kill my compositor. That one, not super important for most people, but if you do videos, I've had... One person say that it's a bit difficult to see the text without actually having the composite disabled. So just having a key to disable that actually is very useful. So the next section is literally just the most basic script stuff. So we've got things to just run my scripts and yeah, we've got some audio control stuff in here with my vol control script, which uses Amixer in the back end. And then I'm controlling my screen brightness. We've got screenshots through my little screenshot handler script. And then it's just application launches down here. So that's pretty much everything that I've got bound in here. There's a couple of things I would like to actually make work a bit more seamlessly. So I'll show you one of the problems I have right now. So if I full screen this window, and if I open up a new window, it doesn't reshow my polybar. I should probably move all my application launches into a handler script so that when I open one, it'll also reshow my polybar if it's hidden. But that's easy to fix by just hiding and, or by just full screening and unfull screening a window. The other one is if I bring up something in MPV and if I use MPV to go into full screen. So let's just actually do that. And now if I unfull screen that within, bit, uh, within MPV, it won't actually hide the full, the bar, but if I were to actually use the hotkey I've got bound, then that actually will do it. So I think there's a way to bind scripts to run from MPV, so I might have to just do that. I think the other main one that breaks right now is if I full screen this, I so I full screen that, and then I send this over to the right. So the way that BSPWM handles it is a bit differently to i3. So I don't think in i3 you can actually send a window to the right, and that'll send it to your external monitor if it's on the right side. But in BSP, you will. Did I say BSP before? I meant in i3, you can't do it if I did say BSP. Doesn't matter. So if I send that over, oh, it is? Wait, it's working now? What did I, did I fix that? And just forget I fixed it? Anyway, okay. I guess I fixed that and forgot I fixed it. So that's good. What it was doing before was it wasn't actually re-showing this actual polybar. So I must have fixed that before and then just forgot about it. Okay, that's cool. So. The main two things that are a problem with this are polybar handling, but I'll fix those as time goes on. It's not a big deal. I can work around the way that polybar functions right now. It's just not as neat. Also, sometimes I'll have windows disappear and not reshow because I have a script that's hiding them and then I have to full screen and unfull screen to actually show them again. So I need a bit of work on that, but the general stuff that you need in your BSP configs are here. And obviously, if you don't want to bind anything, you can just do everything from your terminal and just run all of these commands if you want to. Then if that's what you want to do, go right ahead. But I think that it's going to be much simpler just to bind these within the simplex hotkey daemon, bind them to keys that you're going to remember, and then just have your system 
far easier to use, so you don't always have to just live in the terminal if you don't need to use the terminal for anything. So I think that might be pretty much everything for this video. I don't have anything else to go over for my Simplex hotkey daemon configs, so I reckon we should end it there. So, if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this where I just go over my general configs, let me know, I'm happy to do them. Or if you want to see some tutorials about, say, BSPWM or I don't even know if I could really do a second one on Simplex Hotkey Daemon, but maybe for some of the tools to make your window management more generic, I'm going to do a video on XDO and also XDO tools, so keep your eyes open for that one. Down below, I have got my Discord, so if you want to chat with me, go there. And also, I've got my library, so if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, that's also available. I've got my support links down below, so if you want to support the channel, go there. And feel free to donate any money to my library wallet or my LBC wallet and my Bitcoin. I think I've also got an Ethereum and maybe my Ripple wallet or something. I reckon that's all I have. Maybe I don't have the Ripple one. I know I have the Bitcoin and Ethereum and also the LBC. But they'll be down in the description down below, so go check those out if you want to actually donate. Obviously, you don't have to. All the content will remain available for free, so feel free to just keep watching the content as you do. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in, so go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. And I think that's pretty much everything for me, so I'm out.